blessings and welcome to about a half hour of yoga practice for anxiety. This is Laura here or Tara Davey. Thank you for joining me here in my virtual yoga studio on YouTube. This is the first class I filmed since I did a little revamping and rebranding of my online presence. I was the YouTube yoga teacher formerly known as Wild Yogi Thing, but now the channel is Laura Tara, just to reflect sort of an embracing of simplicity and truth and myself. So it's, it's all the more special that you're here with me and I am so grateful as always that you've joined me for practice. So for this practice, you may want to have a yoga block handy if you have one. If you don't, you could always grab a book, but you might want to wrap the book in a dish towel or a small blanket or something just to make it not as pokey and sharp. You also might want to grab a blanket or a beach towel or something you can fold up and use as padding, okay? But to start this practice, I'm actually going to have you clear your mat or your space of props and come to lie down on your belly. Take as many steps as you need to get there. And you can do that throughout this practice. You can adapt this and change it up and add and take away whatever you need to to make it yours because it is yours, all right? So come on down. Lie flat and take your feet a little wider than your hips. Let your toes turn out toward either edge of your yoga mat or either edge of the room. Stack one hand on top of the other to make a little pillow and then rest your chin or your forehead. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Ooh, a little air bubble there, excuse me. Rest your chin or your forehead on top of your hands. All right, and as you get to lie flat, begin to consciously release the effort in your body. We'll do some shapes in our body that require us to put in work and effort, but for now, we're gonna do the opposite. Just anywhere that you feel like you're clenching or bracing, soften it. Release maybe in your glutes, your shoulders, your face. And if you haven't already, bring your focus to your breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your nose if nostril breathing is accessible for you today. And just use the simple awareness of your breath as this pathway into the reality of the moment that you're living in. The breath is only happening in the present moment and it gives us this really clear entry point for being present, not being as caught up in the stories and the thoughts, which is understandable, but it doesn't always serve our highest good, our highest well-being. All right, so we're going to try to balance that out with a lot of breath. So we're starting here with breath awareness, just to settle in and arrive for the practice. And then we're gonna move right into some pranayama, some breath work, purposeful, intentional breath technique. And this one's called crocodile. It's really simple. You're gonna inhale deeply and press your low belly into the floor, expanding as much as you can. Now exhale fully, drawing your belly button toward your spine and trying to get all the air out. Maybe exhale with a little bit of power. And that's the breath. Inhale, press your belly into the floor. Exhale, get it all out. And keep going for a few moments. It's an excellent breath for stress and anxiety as it the, the feedback of the ground underneath us gives us a better idea of how we're breathing, gives us a framework to breathe more deeply and from the belly rather than stress breathing that's more shallow. Sometimes we even breathe backward when we're stressed, inhaling to contract the belly and exhaling, expanding, and this helps correct that. So just kind of resetting any of the stressed out, tense patterns of our breath here. While also enjoying that sensation of being on the earth, belly on the earth, close to the ground. So settled, steady, held, supported, grounded. Just in tune with the natural steadiness of things. Let's take three more crocodile breaths.
One more. Press your belly into the floor, expand and full strong exhale. Keep exhaling, draw your navel to the spine. Squeeze all the stale breath out, squeeze the tension out. And then return to a natural pattern of breath. Release your hands. Take your arms down beside your body with the backs of your hands on the floor. Walk your legs in so they're as wide as your hips and then plant the tops of your feet on the floor. You can rest your chin or forehead on the ground depending on what feels good. Press your toenails into the ground. Find your thigh muscles and squeeze them. Same with your glutes. Engage the legs. Tone your belly by imagining you could pull your belly button away from the floor. It doesn't have to go anywhere. Just providing some strength. From that place of strength, inhale, just lift your right leg. Squeeze your glute and thigh to lift. It doesn't matter how high it goes. Just imagine reaching backward. Maybe spread your toes. Keep squeezing and keep breathing. Keep the breath as your entryway into the present experience throughout this practice. Just making sure this leg is awake while staying grounded on our bellies. We'll hold for three, two, three. One, lower down. All right, bring your arms out beside you like goalposts or like a trident on the floor. So your elbows come straight out from your shoulders. Your palms are planted on the floor. Now make fists with your hands. Turn your elbows under and put your fists on the floor. Straight, so elbows are still coming straight out from the shoulders and the fists are off the mat, okay? Still resting your chin or forehead. Legs and belly are still active. For trident presses, inhale, press your fists into the floor. At the same time, squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back, waking up the shoulders and squeezing some tension out of the shoulders. Exhale, release the pressure. Inhale, press the fists, squeeze the shoulders, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, release. Four more. Inhale, press and squeeze. Exhale, release. Inhale, press and squeeze. Squeezing that tension out. Exhale, release. Last two. And release. This time as you release, take your arms back down beside you. Back to the hands on the earth. Press the tops of your feet down. Engage your thighs, glutes, and belly. And with your strength and with your breath, inhale, just lift that left leg up. Use the thigh muscle. Use the glute to reach and lift. So we want to use these strong leg muscles rather than the lower back. Reach backwards, spread your toes, find some space and power, and continue to stay connected to your breath. We'll hold for three, two, one, release it. Okay, from here, you're just going to flip right over like your morning pancakes, if you like pancakes. I know we all, you know, we all have different, uh, different tastes when it comes to breakfast foods. But that being said, just roll your way over onto one side and then flip all the way over onto your back. If you need to adjust so you can still see the screen, that's fine. Okay, knees are bent. Bring the tops of your feet to the floor. Arms down beside your body again, this time with your palms pressing into the earth. Keep toning your belly, this time by pulling your belly button backward toward the mat behind you. Inhale, lift both your feet. Exhale, flex your feet, spread your toes, and straighten your legs to your capacity, which means they can be bent. They can be somewhere near straight. They can be anywhere in between. Just press your heels to the sky. Press your tailbone firmly into the earth and keep toning your belly. A little inversion. This is like doing legs up the wall without the wall. Anytime we invert, we send fresh oxygen, or excuse me, we send freshly oxygenated blood to places that it might not normally get to. We reset the blood flow, and it's really a reset for the nervous system. As cheesy as it might sound, it literally is a shift in perspective because believe it or not, you are at least somewhat upside down here. So just, it's like you could take yourself and lovingly shake yourself up and just, just refresh, restart. Keep toning your belly, keep pressing through your heels. Take a deep breath in. Now on your next exhale, I want you to start to kick your legs, kick. 
kick, kick, kick. It's like taking all that nervous, anxious energy that builds up in our very cells and just kicking it out, flinging it out from the bottom of the feet so that you can be more settled. But for now, don't be settled. Be a little wild. Just lean into all that energy and kick it out. Keep toning your belly. Keep breathing. Kick for five, four, good, three, two, one, bend your knees, hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze, pressing your hands into your shins, shins into your hands to activate and stabilize the hips. Keep pressing your low back into the floor. Feel your whole spine long and stable on the floor. Let your shoulders relax into the floor. And just breathe for a moment. Can you reconnect to that deep breath that you started with, even now that you've been moving a little more vigorously? Can it still be that entry point, that doorway into this is the reality I'm living in. This is my body. This is my practice. And I don't have to be so caught in my mind or my tension. From that place with that breath, really notice the vertebrae of your spine. The spine is the center of the nervous system. It is the channel through which all of those electrical impulses that tell us how we feel and what sensations we experience, it's the channel through which they travel. So feel your spine stable, at ease, supported. And imagine kind of that message being the one that circulates throughout your body. Take a deep breath in. Full exhale, get all the air out. The more you exhale, the more you can inhale. So if you ever feel like you can't take enough breath, try exhaling, right? Now grab the backs of your thighs, tone your belly, and as you inhale, rock up onto your tailbone. And then cross your ankles and come to sit on your heels. So hero pose. Now there might be, for any number of reasons, this might not be the thing to do for your ankles or your knees. In which case, this is your moment to grab your block, put it between your feet, and sit on the block instead. Or you could sit on some stacked up pillows, or you could kneel. Excuse me, man, I'm air bubbly today. You could kneel, or you could just sit in an easy pose on your butt if that feels better. But if you're sitting in hero pose, it's not just a place to sit and chill. It's an actual yoga pose. So let's engage. Let's get embodied, get fully present in our bodies in the pose, which is one way to combat the mind-centric feelings and sensations of anxiety. So take your toenails and press all 10 of them into the floor. Find your thigh bones, squeeze them toward each other. Keep pulling your belly button backward toward your spine to tone your abdomen and stabilize your spine. Keep that. Rest your palms just lightly and gently face down on your thighs, which is going to keep you grounded even though we're not sitting on the belly anymore. And we're going to do some more pranayama. Another breath practice here. The bumblebee breath, the brahmari breath. It's a simple humming breath. And the great thing about it is that sound creates this buzzing, kind of vibrating inside the body, which can buzz and shake away some of the tightness and tension that's associated with anxiety in the body. Sound is also harmonizing by nature, so it brings us into a little more harmony, especially kind of internally and energetically, right? Brings us back into a frequency of more ease and balance and calibration, okay? So it's really simple. Just bring your tongue to the backs of your teeth. Take a deep breath, full breath in through your nose, Keep your mouth closed. Exhale with a hum like mm -hmm. Your inhales and exhales can be as long as you need them to be, right? Take a breath when you need to. We're going to continue together. Humming breath. Really don't be afraid to go for it and buzz away some of your tightness, right? Inhaling.
Last time. Just let the sound fade into silence and naturally transition back into your kind of simple breath awareness, breathing however you breathe, in and out through the nose if you can. And even after the sound is over, can you still practice listening for just a moment? That's one of the beautiful things about sound is it gives us the tools to listen more deeply so that we can also listen more deeply to the silence to the stillness. Listen for the effects of that practice. How do you feel on the other side of that? And one thing my teacher said that has stuck with me and really changed my life ever since I heard it is I'm not asking you to think about it. I'm asking you to feel it. And it's something that seems so simple, so common sense, but there was something about her saying it embodied in that moment where I could really embody it. I felt the call to come out of my mind and feel into my body. So I'd ask you to do that now. I'm not asking you to think about it. I'm asking you to feel it. Just feel how you are now. Okay, deep breath in. Exhale and blink your eyes open. Your palms are still facing down on your legs. I'm gonna have you sit here for a little bit longer. So if you need to add height under your hips or adjust in any way, please do. But keep your toenails pressing into the floor, thighs hugging toward each other, abdomen toned. For a seated spinal flex, this one, we're gonna keep the chin level. So we're not moving the neck. The chin and neck stay stable. We're gonna inhale, arch the low back forward, puff the chest forward, lean forward, squeeze the elbows and shoulders shoulders back, but again, keep your chin level. Exhale, round your lower, mid, and upper back. Pull your low belly in, squeeze your shoulder blades forward, rounding the back, but again, keep your chin level with the earth. With your own breath, inhale, arch. Exhale, round. It's a strong breath, but you go at your own pace as always. I just ask that you don't do this movement in your neck for this particular practice. Keep your chin level. Just move in the spine, that, center, that central channel of the nervous system. It's like you could manually start to move anything that's stuck. Anything that's heavy, just moving it with the, the power of your body and breath. And it's really, I think, the first time we've moved like this, flowing with the breath. So feel your deep connection to that doorway of presence, which is the breath, when you just move with your breath. And if you're like me, and you feel anxiety manifest in your belly, this abdominal movement and the warmth that you're generating in your core kind of acts like squeezing out and melting out any of that tension in the belly. I'm sure you look good. Can't see you, but I can feel you. For three, two, one, round it in. This time, do tuck your chin, pull your low belly towards your spine, exhale for as long as you can without forcing it, but keep exhaling. Squeeze your low belly in. Exhale more than you think you can, not force, but just expand yourself a little bit. We always have more to exhale than we think. So squeeze the stale air out, squeeze the tension out, and again, the more we exhale, the more room we have to inhale. 
When you're ready, do inhale, bring your spine back to neutral, reach your arms straight out in front of you. We're gonna do a rope pull. And what that entails is inhaling, bending the right elbow, making a fist with the right hand, pull your right elbow toward your ribs and reach your left arm across your body. Keep your thighs and belly toned. We're just moving in the upper body. We're gonna exhale, switch. Inhale. Again, it's a strong breath. It's at your pace. And you really feel your rib cage and your shoulders swiveling from side to side like a sliding glass door. Again, clearing out tension from the diaphragm and the chest, those places that can get so tight with anxiety, just physically moving the tightness out, making space. And maybe if you like to visualize as you pull, you imagine pulling aside anything that's keeping you tight and stuck. Anything that's kind of like a narrative that's hanging over you, just pull it away. For five, four, three, two, one, reach your arms out. Pull your shoulders back, lift your heart, tone your belly, get stable, and then exhale, just intentionally gather your hands to your heart. Just touch in again. Don't have to think about it, but feel it. For one deep breath in, and exhale. Okay, put your block to the side. If you're sitting on a block, and briefly come onto your hands and knees. Tabletop with your hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Spread your fingers wide, press your index fingers into the floor, and then just tap your toes out on the floor, since we were sitting on the toes for quite some time. <laughs> And then pick up your feet and roll your ankles out a few times. Breathe, continue to walk through that doorway of breath and then start to circle the other way. And then release that. And I'm just gonna ask you to stand up and in the, the spirit of staying grounded and embodied and simple, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Maybe you just come to kneeling and then stand up. If there are any other steps you need to take to stand, please do. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm really feeling kind of what it's like to stand up after we just sat on the heels for quite some time. So maybe do a little like dance party, shake out your legs a little bit. <laughs> and then come to stand solid on the earth. Find, maybe put your hands on your hips to find out where your hip bones fall on the front of your body. So feel out those hip bones. Then I want you to position your feet and you can look down, position your feet directly underneath them. Toes point straight ahead so your toes aren't really turning out or in. All right. For a little bit of grounding through the feet, we're ending with kind of the most straightforward grounding practice, which is standing on the feet because our feet are kind of that primordial tool that touches the earth and connects us to that earth essence, which can be so settling. So here we are. We're gonna make sure that we're really connected in our feet. So with your hands on your hips, look at your toes. If you can, as you inhale, pick up all 10 toes. As you exhale one at a time from pinky to big toe, hook your feet, hook your toes into the earth. Squeeze the earth with your toes like suction cups. Feel yourself grabbing for that earth essence, that earth energy, and we'll do it again. Inhale, lift all 10 toes. Exhale one at a time, hook the ground underneath you with, with your toes from pinky to big toe and squeeze, okay? Inhale one more time, pick the toes up. Exhale from pinky to big toe, hook them down and squeeze. Now keep that, try to balance the weight from toes to heels. If you like to lock your knees like I do, take a baby bend in your knees. Lift your spine to neutral so your shoulders stack on top of your hips, your chin is level with the earth. Keep toning your belly lightly, belly button to spine so we have a stable spine. Lift your heart and pull your shoulder blades toward each other so that you have this open-hearted intention. 
And then reach your arms down beside you with your palms facing forward, thumbs rotating backward to again, externally rotate your shoulders and help you embody that open heart. It's so easy to feel constriction in that heart and torso area when we're anxious. And so being open hearted as a person who experiences anxiety is almost a revolution. It's so courageous to say, no matter how much constriction I experience, I'm standing right here with my heart open. Your, the crown of your head reaches toward the heavens as your toes continue to hook into the earth. And you stand here in Tadasana in mountain pose and you return to that pathway that portal into the present moment which is your fine breath continuing to come in and out through the nose and this is our final pose of the practice rather than lying down because it can be so difficult for some of us who get really hyped up on our own energy to slow and and lie back it can almost feel threatening so we're going to close in a standing grounding pose standing strong so we'll spend a few moments here together just experiencing the sensations of your breath remembering that powerful teaching that you don't have to think about it but you can simply feel it Feeling your toes reaching for earth, embodying your support and steadiness as the crown of your head extends toward the cosmos and reminds you that you are connected to something bigger than you. Anxiety can so easily make us feel like the thing, whatever it is, is the biggest thing. So it's so impactful to remind ourselves that there is some force greater than we are, even if it's just the force of love, the force of mystery, the mystery of the universe. Maybe it's God, maybe it's Shiva, maybe it's the goddess, maybe it's your community, right? But as your crown, the crown of your head reaches to the heavens, you're just reminded that you are bigger than just your thoughts, your tension, your anxiety. Breath still rolling in and out, still connecting you to the realities of your present experience deeper than any tension can go. And as you embody Tadasana, the mountain, remember that the mountains don't wonder why they are. They don't wonder if they have a right to stand on the earth to exist They don't wonder what's next or overthink what's in the past. Not that any of those things are wrong or bad. Remember that you're human, but take a lesson from the mountain because the mountain simply is wise, steady, and clear. And maybe for your final few breaths of practice, you give yourself permission to be that. And through breath, you uncover the knowing that you already are that. On your next inhale, slowly gather your hands to heart center. Press your palms together, a gesture of steadiness, balance, and calibration, and bring your hands to your heart. Feel free to bow your forehead toward your chest if that feels good. Bowing to your heart, to your practice, to the community that we've shared with each other in practice and in service of anyone who cannot practice right now. And with abundant gratitude, I offer a bow to you. And I close our practice. Thank you for joining me. If you have feedback, feel free to reach out to me at Laura Tara on Instagram, or if you just want to connect about this class or about anything else related to the practice. If this has benefited you, please feel free to share and like this video and subscribe for monthly classes and teachings. And just know how grateful I am for you for being here with me. I love you, love you, love you, and I'll see you next time. Hey y'all, so my head got cut off in that last mountain pose, which I'm not too worried about because it's more about you hearing and breathing and embodying than seeing my face, but I just wanted to come back one more time so you could see my face as I tell you I love you, I'm so grateful to you for practicing, and I can't wait to practice with you again. Take care.